Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. What exactly is temperature? Oh, oh, I know. It's just the motion of the molecules. It's just kinetic energy. Sure, that's the explanation you usually get, but how accurate is that? First, let's review a little. In my What is Energy video, there was a concept tree that looks something like this. There are all sorts of different types of energy. Light is basically just pure kinetic energy, but light doesn't have temperature. Sure, you might see a label like this on a box of bulbs, but that's not the temperature of light. It's just the temperature of the metal filament that would naturally emit that kind of light. Without matter, the concept of temperature doesn't even make sense. Matter is everything that has mass. Most of the time, that's atoms made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. All of those little bits have kinetic energy. If those bits are moving randomly, then that's it. But if their motion has some kind of trend, then what they make up is also moving. This idea of motion extends to every level of existence, all the way up to things we can see. But how much of that is temperature? First, I think we can rule out the kinetic energy of this walking guy. That's normal-sized energy, and as he already said, it's just the motion of the molecules. We're talking about tiny things. That's what we call internal energy. The energy inside things. The energy we can't see. Let's take the bottom-up approach. The energy of the stuff inside protons and neutrons isn't temperature. That's just mass. The energy of protons and neutrons isn't temperature either. That's just nuclear energy. The energy between atoms and molecules is just chemical energy. This comes down to the kinetic energy of just the atoms and molecules. So it makes sense that we call this thermal energy. But not all of it. Remember, we're not including the motion of the things these molecules make up. Just the random bits its molecules would still have if it weren't moving. So which random bits exactly? <sighs> Those tiny molecules wiggle and jiggle and spin and shift. As long as none of it affects how the normal sized object moves, then you're good. But hold up a second. This big lake always has way more kinetic energy than I do. But we can still both have the same temperature. It could even be colder and still have more kinetic energy. Hmm... So, what's it mean for things to be the same temperature? When did you become the voice of reason? If two things are sitting next to each other, then they'll swap energy. If one thing is hotter than the other, more energy will move to the colder thing. This will warm up the colder thing and cool off the hotter thing. The temperatures will slowly meet in the middle and the energy swap will balance out. Analogy time! Andrew Preston wanted to know what it meant for things to be wet anyway. Let's say you're soaking wet from getting out of the shower. Naturally, you reach for your towel to dry off. You have extra water and the towel has places for it to go. Eventually though, the towel fills up most of those places and now it's just giving as much water to you as you are to it. Let's call that property dampness. It doesn't measure how much water is in the towel. Just something more like average water per fabric loop. Likewise, temperature doesn't measure the total amount of molecular kinetic energy. It just measures the average amount of kinetic energy per molecule. And the thing about averages is they can lose their meaning if data is too varied. So the same thing can happen with temperature sometimes. Wow, this turned into a super deep question. So what's your ideal temperature? Please share in the comments. Mine is somewhere between 68 and 74 Fahrenheit. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.